Hello, hello, hello. It's Knits for Sanity and welcome to my WIP and Chat. WIP stands for Work in Progress. So grab whatever it is that you're working on, whether it is a craft or a hobby or even if you have a chore to do. And let me keep you company for a little while. If you're brand new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are a returning visitor, I love having you. Welcome back. All right. So real briefly, what is it that I'm working on? Whew, let me tell you. <laughs> I am working on just started. It took forever to get this up. Uh, my very first carrot art painting. And it is The Girl with the Froggy. I did an unboxing of her last week. And once I opened her up, I knew she had to be the first painting that I started working on from beginning in the new year. This painting is very large. It is officially the largest painting that I have ever done. There are those that do come much larger than this, but this is very large for me. It is a 70 by 70 which um, you start having troubles when you get anything over like 60 centimeters because trying to reach in far enough gets to be a little bit of a challenge, I have found. And then when it's a 70 by 70 square like this, like there's no way, like the center is just going to be hard to do no matter what. But it's beautiful. <laughs> and so I really wanted to do it. I wanted to get it in this size and... I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'll be able to hammer this one out and have a glorious end result. Um, I am doing a couple of changes with some of the original drills. I am incorporating a few drills from DP with Sparklers. And I will talk more about that later on. But DP with Sparklers is featured here. My cover minder, my fox face and butt. <laughs> It's so cute. Is uh, from Merry Making Crafts, which I do do an unboxing on this that will be released tomorrow. And my trays are from Bella Art Day Nicole. And my pen is just a very normal pen, but it did come from DP with Sparklers. There. I think that covers all my stuff. My washi tape, I think this was what was included in a Diamond Art Club toolkit and then of course my sparkle washi tape is around the outside and um, I've talked about that many times before as well. All right so um, speaking of drill pens I really want a good drill pen um, and so I've been doing some looking around and some like research and stuff. The problem is they're so expensive. So expensive. Like, it's kind of getting to the point. I kind of wonder, how can anyone ever afford this hobby? Um, fortunately, I don't have a problem using these drill pens, which are very... I mean, this is a very standard drill pen. It's like what you get from Diamond Art Club, and you can find them on Amazon. So, I can use these, but I would love to find something um, a little bit shorter, just because I do twirl it around quite a bit. And um, I do have a little bit of arthritis. And anytime you twirl a heavier object like this, you risk throwing it out of your hands. But then especially, I don't always have the best grip. Um, I send my pens flying a lot. So I'd like something a little bit shorter, uh, maybe something a little bit lighter. And so I have found a couple of great, great small businesses, which is what I love with Etsy shops and such that I think do make wonderful, wonderful products that would suit all of my needs. But I just, oh, I mean, I understand the price point. I'm not complaining. I'm not saying that people are charging too much. Not at all. You know, these are handmade items and, ap I mean, absolutely, you know, you need to charge $80 for that pen. I get it. That is okay. It's just, I don't have $80 for a pen. <laughs> so, I think that is, well, and especially, you know, when it's something that you can't try out first. So, if it's 80 bucks and then it ends up I don't, it's not the right pen for me. 
that's now $80 that I've now spent, which, you know, in my household, that's several meals. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's, it's a conundrum. And like I said, I mean, I am absolutely not making any kind of complaint against these businesses because I, I mean, I get it as someone who knits and sells or has sold my knitted items for, I mean, realistically pennies, <laughs> you know, for the amount of time that's put in, I, it's, they're pennies, but yet it's, it ends up being a costly item for other people. So I totally get it. It's just, I need recommendations, guys. So now you all know what it is that I'm looking for. A shorter pen, lightweight pen. And like I said, I mean, I found a few places, but I'm waiting to hear what you guys tell me. If, you know, if there is a particular company that you just love their pens and that would kind of fit with what I am asking for, please let me know. Leave it in the comments below. I I am. I want I want a good drill pen and I want to be able to buy one and have it be right. You know, I don't want it to then be sitting around useless for me. So let me know. Really good drill pen providers, makers. Thank you. So that's my plea out to all of you. And in fact, if you want, I can even just let that be my, my community question this week. Every week I do ask a community, or most weeks, sometimes I forget. I ask a community question. Um, part of the reason why I started my YouTube channel was to join and be a part of and help continue to create a community with people. Uh, I don't get out a whole lot <laughs> and I have found that actually online relationships end up becoming very, very real relationships. And so I wanted to help foster that for myself and for other people. And so one thing that I do is I ask a community question and then I encourage everyone to not only answer it. These are not meant to be invasive community questions at all. They're just meant to be little get to know you type things. And I encourage everyone to answer for themselves, but then to also look through the answers and see what other people have written. You know, maybe you can meet a new friend. But this week, I just want to know good drill pens. And specifically, if possible, to meet the requests <laughs> that I have. Um... So yeah, let me know what is the best drill pin you own? Where did it come from? Who would you recommend for me? That kind of jazz. I would really appreciate it. So how was your guys' week? Mine was busy. What a surprise, huh? Shock, shock, shock. <laughs> At this point, you're thinking, Nets for Sanity, your week is always busy. I don't think I've ever, ever, ever come back and told you guys, hey, guess what? My week was really slow. It was boring. I had all kinds of downtime. <laughs> I have four children, if you're new here. And I have four children who are all active in different things. And we live in a very rural community. So that means I live in my car. And anytime we go anywhere, it is a trip. Um, school, I don't mind so much. But even there, the other day, I had to take three trips to and from the middle school, high school complex. And doing that, that was still 90 miles combined total right around 90 miles. I should actually, and that's just my guess, I should um, figure out the actual distance. But I think if the school is 13 miles from my, maybe only 12. Okay, so maybe 80, no, probably 90 miles. Probably at least 90 miles to make three round trips from my house down to that school complex. And that was just 
for that. You know, I had other errands that I did too. You know, I had to then go out and get gas. And um, so that is a lot of driving. And that's, that's for the local, the local stuff. So yes, so I am busy. I am very busy. And if you're also new, it's wrestling season, which in my house means something. Uh, <laughs> I do have a daughter who is a little bit obsessed with the sport she no longer wrestles herself um and actually I'll just launch right into her story for the week so I do have this middle daughter who loves wrestling and originally I put her in wrestling because she has pretty severe dyspraxia which means that she is very bad with coordinated movements. And I thought that wrestling would be a good option because what we were told was dance and gymnastics. Well, dance and gymnastics was not local and very expensive, especially at that time. I mean, we're poor now, but we were insanely poor back then. But someone told me about wrestling and I thought, well, wrestling would work. I don't know if she'll like it, but you know, let's give it a go. And it was actually for both her and my oldest. And it was my oldest that I first considered wrestling for. But then when I found out that kids as young as four could join as well, I knew that daughter number two should go too to help with her dyspraxia. And in the end, she absolutely adored the sport. She did wrestle for a number of years. But because of her dyspraxia specifically, her dyspraxia, her very poor muscle memory, I mean, that's all related and it's very common in children with like non-typical neurodevelopments. So um, she did quit wrestling a few years ago, but her passion for the sport has always been and she still wanted to find a way to be involved with wrestling because she just loves the sport so much. It's just because of her own limitations, she just couldn't ever be good at wrestling. And as she was getting older, that was becoming more and more apparent and more and more frustrating for her and kind of frustrating for, I think, her opponents too because she was such an easy an easy pen, which, I mean, I don't mean that as offense to my daughter. I actually mean it as a huge strength and asset to my daughter to recognize, you know, I have given this sport my all, but I, this is not how I can advance in the sport by actually wrestling. So I actually give her a lot of credit for that. And I think that showed a lot of maturity. I'm drinking coffee. It's actually pretty early. I wanted to do this whip and chat last night. Sorry, popcorn brain. I'm sidetracked now. Um, I'd wanted to do this whip and chat last night, except uh, <laughs> I really wanted to have everything kitted up because I have done whip and chats in the past where I will kit up and chat with you guys. But this canvas is so large and it took me hours to kit up the drills between the fact that there's 75 colors, which is a pretty good number. But then also... I did have some static issues because it's winter. It was nothing, nothing like my Diamond Art Club kits in the winter, though. So that was good. Um, It just took forever. And then even trying to tape this canvas. Oh, so anyway, I ended up staying up much later just trying to put together my canvas. And by the end of all that... I decided, you know what, let's lay down one color in this square to try and now unwind, <laughs> try and relax from having done my relaxing hobby. <laughs> We're going to use my relaxing hobby to negate the stress of the same relaxing hobby. <laughs> so anyway, back to my daughter. I actually do give her a lot of credit for recognizing that maybe there are other ways that she can be involved in this sport that she absolutely loves. And then she was invited to be a junior coach slash junior manager of the high school wrestling team as a fifth grader. And so now she's in seventh grade. She's doing her third year with that and she loves it. 
she is doing very well. Um, it's a lot of work. She got her iPad, you know, she wrote that proposal for the sports boosters. So she is recording, she's editing videos, she's uploading videos to YouTube. And then she also needed to figure out how to get videos transferred to the head coach's ancient computer. I mean, this computer is a dinosaur, guys. A dinosaur. It still has a CD drive in it. Uh, <laughs> so she's been having to transfer all of these video files to his super old computer. She uh, has really, really started to work on scoring this year and keeping a very accurate score during the tournament. And it's kind of been a goal of hers. And last night she did it. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect yet. Like she, she's not capable of completely doing this on her own yet. But last night she did record and score simultaneously. <laughs> And part of that is last week at our duel, which lasted till 1030 at night and was insane. Uh, but anyway, last week she did ask a couple of sisters to help film. But then, I mean, they were they were fine. It, it was super nice of them. They offered to help again last night. <laughs> and I think, I hope Veda just said, you know, oh, thank you so much. If I need your help, I will definitely let you know. But the videos were not good. They were not good videos. I mean, and again, it's not these girls. It's not their fault. They were they were just helping out, you know. And it was so it was super sweet of them to do that. Um, but <laughs> Vita decided, nope, I'm just doing it. <laughs> so last night she was sitting there recording and taking score. Uh, and she's not. She's really close to having score be completely accurate. She's she's really close. She has a tough time knowing how to mark penalty points. Um, and she does tend to still sometimes kind of like fade out for a little while because you know she's a neurodivergent almost 13 year old child so she tends to kind of let her mind wander I've noticed <laughs> so then she sometimes misses some things uh but for the most part she's getting better you know like I looked over her bout sheets last night and there were a couple of really promising things on there like there was one bout it was really hard to tell you know, was this, it just came to an end because the match was over? Or was this a technical fall? But she caught it. It was actually a technical fall. And she had marked that correctly. So, you know, it's things like that, that it's like, okay, you know, she she is paying attention. She is catching this stuff. She is catching what the ref is signaling. Um. Well, all right. So that's again kind of the background a little bit on my daughter and with her wrestling and then another aspect that's going on right now with her is last year I had purchased tickets for her and um, a friend of mine and her two sons who wrestle as well as their cousin Trent who's Veda's like one of her favorite people on the planet um, to go to a University of Michigan wrestling tournament well, kind of a complicated story, but essentially, we'll just say COVID got in the way and it didn't happen last year. And so I asked Veda, you know, I, at first I was debating about even telling her that I'd purchased the tickets and just let it, just let it go, just never tell her about it. But I thought, no, she's 12 now. I'm going to, I'm going to tell her about it and we'll see what she wants to do. Cause I thought I could still take her. We could see if um some other people wanted to go but she actually came up with the suggestion of well couldn't we stream it she was more interested in having all of these people together to watch the wrestling with her and so that is what we ended up doing last year we got together for just a little bit on a sunday afternoon to watch the same duel that we were supposed to be at in person 
And that was awesome. But then she did make me promise that we would go sometime this year. And I said, yep, we can do that. So October 21st, <laughs> I bought tickets for January 15th. And I've talked about this before. I bought these tickets for January 15th, which is, you know, this coming Sunday. I Everybody knew about it. We had it marked on our calendars. All right, it's coming up. And then Monday afternoon, I get a message from the other mother telling me that the football banquet or like awards dinner is January 15th. I bought my tickets in October. <laughs> and the boys have to go to this. Um, they have to go to this. It's Trent's senior year, and he earned a couple of different awards. And my friend's son, her oldest, also did. I mean, like, they have to go to this. There's just no... They have to go. But... I cannot begin to tell you how upset I was. You know, I was kind of angry. I was frustrated. I was really sad for my daughter. And I'm not, you know, it's not that I'm angry at any one person. It's just, it's just the situation. It's just so unfair to my kid. Not to mention the fact that at this point, I have purchased a lot of tickets for U of M wrestling and have yet to go. <laughs> Um, and then the real, the real kick in the teeth was the night before my daughter had given me a letter that she wrote to coach Bormitt, who is the head coach of the university of Michigan wrestling team. And this was something that like I had talked with her about several months ago about, cause she ultimately she loves wrestling and she'd really love to eventually coach an all girls team. And I think she wants to do like a youth all girls team, I think, but you know, I don't actually know for sure. I just know she wants to, she would love to be able to coach and she would love to be able to coach an all girls team. So I had mentioned as part of her own journey in this and as part of her own working on her own self-confidence because her confidence you know, she's not quite 13. She's seventh grade. She's a middle middle child stuck in between sisters one year ahead and one year behind. So her confidence isn't real awesome right now. And she feels, well, yeah, she feels pretty unconfident. Is that the word? Unconfident? Or is it just not confident? With herself. And so I said, you know, write a letter to somebody and who knows, maybe, maybe they'll get back with you. You know, if you write a really good letter and you really advocate for yourself, which was the self-confidence part of this, you know, if you really advocate for yourself and, you know, say who you are and why you are writing this letter and, you know, make it clear that this is something that is of genuine interest to you, maybe, you will hear something back. So Sunday night, she gave me this letter. She wrote to Coach Bormitt. And then the very next, and she writes in there too, she's so excited because she's going to go to her first tournament finally after not being able to go last year on January 15th. And then I had to tell her, well, honey, <laughs> you and I will go. We are still going this year. But nobody else can go again. So once again, what was supposed to be like her favorite birthday present two years in a row, it has not worked out at all. But we are still going just the two of us on Sunday. Um, it is autograph night and she does have a favorite wrestler on the team. So she's really hoping that she can have a brief little meeting with him. And so I said, yeah, definitely the two of us are going. And in the meantime, I did reach out, you know, trying to find out, is there any way I can get this letter by chance to Coach Bormitt sooner rather than later? Um, just it would be cool if maybe she could hear something by the time 
we go Sunday or, you know, shortly after that, you know, I just, I just felt so, so bad for her. And she wrote such a good letter. If you don't follow me on Instagram, find me on Instagram. It's all linked in my notes and stuff. Um, but I, I'm knits for sanity there too. And I actually put her letter on Instagram asking for help, you know, Hey, can anyone help me get this to coach Bormit? <laughs> um, it's a good letter. Last night, I did hear back. I sent it off to, you know, like the very general University of Michigan email. And I did hear back from, you know, their intern or secretary or whoever, whoever it is that is like in charge of going through all these emails and stuff. And I had just requested, you know, hey, if you get this, you know, can you please forward this to the right people and give me a um, physical mailing address too, because then I can have her mail it the actual real copy of the letter as well. And last night I did hear back from, like I said, secretary, intern, other student helper, she said, I forward the, forward this, forwarded it. Okay, guys, you know what I'm trying to say. So just pretend that I said the word correctly, okay? Anyway, she did send that letter on and she did give me an address. So today, my husband took my oldest and youngest daughters, my eighth and sixth grader to Ann Arbor, which is where University of Michigan is located, to... Uh, a University of Michigan medical facility for some general testing related to their rare genetic disease. And I asked husband, can you take this letter with you and mail it from an actual post box in Ann Arbor? Because then, depending on if I mean, I don't know how much mail this mail man gets, probably a ton of it, but I'm hoping it's a very obviously handwritten letter. Maybe he'll actually get this letter and see it like this weekend. So that's, I guess I'm not sure what I, I want. I just, I really want my daughter to get a response. <laughs> yes, I just want my baby to get a response because... She's a cool kid, and she's had some crappy draws in life. I just wanted to get a response. So we'll see. I will keep you posted. All right, so that was a lot of wrestling talk again. Um, yeah, sorry. that You know, that's just kind of how it is during wrestling season around here. Um, I can tell you this, I never thought in a million and one years that I would ever be talking this much about wrestling ever. I mean, not ever. Even 10 years ago, I would have been like, what? Wrestling? But life takes unexpected turns. And here we are. <laughs> My coffee's gotten a little bit cool. Yeah, I have my coffee and I have my LaCroix sitting here. So <laughs> I'm I'm set. Um, so let's let's maybe change subjects now because I'm sure you're ready. Uh my son and his book on the immune system. Talked about it last week in my whipping chat. He is, you know, it is every night, he and dad, sometimes I'm there too are reading this book as his bedtime reading every night. The other day when I was taking him to dance class, he was or continued to be a wealth of knowledge. He told me all about how the immune system changes from birth through middle life to old age. And then he also kept talking about he kept talking and he, he kept like putting his hands like this and then putting it up against his chest. So his hands would be like this and he put up against his chest. And he's like, you know, the thing that looks like chicken wings. <laughs> I'm thinking the thing that looks like chicken wings. What 
are we talking about? <laughs> well, I figured it out. It's the thymus. He's talking about the thymus is the thing that looks like chicken wings. It's the thymus, guys. Look up the thymus. It actually, you know, it's kind of interesting. It turns out that as you age, like once you hit puberty, your thymus... Well, after your first year, your thymus actually starts to like fill with fat. And then by the time you hit puberty, it really starts to just kind of like not exist anymore. That often really old people, when they die and you do an autopsy, often you can't even really see the presence of the thymus at all anymore. It's very, very interesting. And see, I never would have known any of this if it hadn't been for my seven-year-old son. <laughs> So yes, he is loving his book on the immune system. He cracks me up. It is standardized testing again. It's that time of year. It's always that time of year. It's, you know, every fall, every winter, every spring. It's insane. But anyway, he had his reading standardized test the other day and he was so cute. He came home from school and you know he's first grade and he says I did really good on my test I get to go to an ice cream party tomorrow and I said oh you do yeah yeah he says I had to get a one seven eight but you know what I did way better than that I got a one eight seven and I just you know smiled and nodded and like yo that's great son I'm really proud of you good job well then yesterday he came home with this little sheet of paper that does indeed show his goal was a 178 and he did indeed get a 187 so he remembers stuff so well just incredible he's like I said he's just he's such a fun little boy I'm so happy we have him you know my husband was really good with having the three girls actually my husband probably would have been good with no children. Like, I, <laughs> he, don't, I mean, please do not mistake. He is a phenomenal father. He could never in a million years not imagine having the four kids we do have. But he was not the one who was like real gung-ho. Like, yeah, let's have kids. Let's start a family. No, that was not him. That was me. He was also not real gung-ho with, hey, let's have another one. No, no, that was me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was really, really good with just having the three girls. And understandably so, because we had three in three years. It was very overwhelming and very, excuse me, very crazy for a lot of years. You know, there's a good section of my life from when the girls were little that I I don't remember anything, really. It's just all a big, big blur. <laughs> so, I, you know, I get it, understandable. But um, I had really wanted one more and he did agree, kind of. It was a, we won't do any prevention for a year and see what happens agreement. <laughs> And probably, it was like eight months later than we were expecting again. Um, and now, I mean, obviously now he's just totally smitten with our son and all of our daughters. And he could not imagine life without any of them. And he is such a good dad. Such a good dad. It would have been an absolute shame had this man never had children. Let's put it that way, because he is so good. Um, what else is going on? Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. So in addition to the standardized testing, which uh, my daughters, my oldest especially, she, you know, she's a kind of a typical oldest child in a lot of ways. We are very much a perfectionist. We are very, very hard on ourselves. And so my daughter, they had their math portion of standardized testing yesterday. And she sent me two emails while at school about how 
she thinks that she did absolutely terrible. She got a lower score than what she did in the fall. And why do I have to be so dumb? Blah, 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 blah. Oh. So we kind of had to talk through that and you know, it's, it's a number of different things going on here. One of them is she's actually very, very bright. And for whatever reason, winter testing on your advanced kids tends to be rough. There's something about the algorithm that you often will see a lower score in the winter than what you did in the fall, but then you smash it in spring. So I told her about all of that. And then because she is so bright that even her quote unquote bad score is still an advanced score. And so then we had to talk a little bit about everyone has different strengths and it's, it's important for you to also understand that what may be your worst subject, math, is still better than a lot of kids who consider math to be their best subject. And I know that when you're 14, it's really hard to see that and have a good perspective on that. Just because of brain development, you really are only thinking of how the world sees you. And that's how young teens, I mean, that's how their brain is wired at that point, which is why they become suddenly so self-conscious about their appearance. And it's because they're finally recognizing that the world is looking at them. What they don't understand yet is that the world is not looking only at them. For the most part, the world doesn't notice you. <laughs> but it's the first time that a child has a real realization that, oh, I am part of this larger world and this larger world is paying attention to me, uh, especially within peers. <sighs> so, you know, we talked and... I, I think she's okay. <laughs> you know, I think she's okay. It, it doesn't help when her younger sister, the youngest sister, my sixth grader, who turned 11 only two months ago. So she's very young for her class. And she's really good at math. Her younger sister scored almost 20 points higher than her. And... I didn't know if telling my oldest that that actually is a, a lower score for your sister would be helpful. <laughs> Except, you know what? Maybe it would have been. It might, you know, it might have been to have said, hey, look, Evie scored several points below her highest score, too, on this test. And yet, look you know, she has every reason to then feel like you. Well, I'm so dumb. I can't believe I lost, you know, six points or whatever it was, you know. But yet, how much higher of a score is that than yours? Well, that's how a lot of kids, most children actually, would feel when they look at your scores. I don't know if that would work or not. I have to think about that. I have to think that through a little bit. You know, the thing about parenting teens is it's all, it's all about like mental fancy footwork. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all about thinking about my child's personality, their individual personalities, knowing about the teenage brain, knowing what's going on with peers and in their communities. And then it's like piecing all of this information together and understanding like sibling dynamics between my kids. And and so then you, 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 you like have to evaluate all of this stuff and then try and come up with what you think might be the best and most effective way to reach your kid. <laughs> Um, it's, it's interesting with teens. So I'll have to think through that one a little bit. It's also report card week for my oldest three. My son is on a different, uh, like academic schedule. They do, I think they do trimesters in elementary school, but then the 
higher grades, middle school and high school, they have actual semesters. And I already know the grades of my kids. And guys, I got to tell you, I feel gosh darn lucky. I feel so lucky. I have friends that struggle with their kids and their grades so much. Kids who just don't want to put forth any effort, who just don't want to do the work. And then I have friends with kids that just are not good at school. And man, you just pray that they're able to get that C. And if they happen to get a B, hokey smokes, that's amazing. Because they just aren't good at school. My daughters have no clue <laughs> how blessed they are in the area of academics. I mean, they're miserable athletes, but they're smart. <laughs> um, we have all A's, all A's. The lowest grade out of my three daughters is one A minus. That's the lowest grade, and that's still an A. And do you know what that A minus is? That's for my youngest daughter in her math class, which is like four or five years ahead of where, no, four years ahead of where she should be. Three, okay. All right, she's in algebra, which is a ninth grade class. <laughs> she's in the sixth grade. She really should be in the fifth grade. So she got a 91.7% in a class that clearly is years ahead of her. Uh, so I have no complaints. None. I am absolutely amazed. Absolutely amazed with my kids. And if, you know, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, you're so lucky my kids are... I hear you. I do. I feel you. We, I mean, we've had our bouts too. Last year, my middle daughter in math, it was like pulling teeth. She refused to do her homework. This year, it's like the light bulb went on and she's been phenomenal. And I hope that continues. She really loves her teacher this year. Might help because this teacher also loves wrestling. <laughs> so, you know, that that might help too. Um, And I, you know, I have taught kids and special ed relatively extensively actually and I like I said at the beginning I come back to everyone is different and we all have our strengths we all have our weaknesses and it's it's being able to acknowledge these differences and not see them as a negative if if we all were equally good at math, who would be giving us our entertainment? If we all were excellent story writers and could write amazing plays and scripts for movies or television shows, who would create all of the technology needed to display that stuff? It's, it's you know, understanding our individual uniqueness, and then f finding out and figuring out and working out how we can use our own gifts within our community, within our world. And I believe everybody is capable of that. You know, I say that as somebody that I myself have struggled, and I've talked about this, and I... I needed better direction than what I was given. You know, here I am, a mom with four kids, and I don't have a career. And I needed help with being able to figure out what to do with my life, and I didn't get that. And it's because everyone just made this assumption, oh, you're so smart, you're going to figure it out. But what nobody realized, I didn't have the skills to figure out that part of it. And yeah, I, you know, I, I hope some of what I'm saying makes sense. I don't know. Sometimes I get kind of deep and philosophical. I was a philosophy major after all. That was one of my majors. Um, that I don't always think I make sense. <laughs> all right. So let's sum it up. Mr. Rogers style. You're special. 
just the way you are. There you go. That's it. That's my message. <laughs> um, trying to think if there's anything else that's just been really sticking out in life right now. <sighs> I don't know. Oh, there is some really awesome news that I can share. Um, so back in the very end of November, I mentioned, everyone, please keep my oldest daughter in your thoughts. Um, it looks like we have some additional medical stuff going on, but we don't know what just yet. And we won't know more until January. Well, I feel comfortable sharing this now because... It's good news. Um, so my husband took our daughters to um, University of Michigan. It was actually for eye appointments that they need there. Uh, with their genetic disease, they have a tendency to develop tumors through various parts of their bodies. If you want to know more about that, there is a video where I did talk about that pretty extensively. And that one is actually like bookmarked and everything with timestamps. So you can go and just find that section of the video if you want. Well, in November, my oldest, who's already had two major surgeries related to this genetic disease, it was discovered that she had what looked like a retinal angioma. So an eye tumor, which very, very common among VHL patients. And in fact, that's how the disease was first really discovered was because of eye tumors. So um, we had notified her doctor on the other side of the state. And well, I did. I had notified and just asked, hey, this was found at a screening over here on this side of the state. She has her annual appointment on January 12th. Is this something that you want to see her sooner than this? Or can we wait until January? What do you want to do? And I sent, you know, what the other doctor had said and everything from over here. I'm finishing up my coffee. Um, and I did hear back the next day and they said, no, 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 January will be fine. We can wait until January. Okay. Okay. Well, based on the findings over here, it I mean, it was like almost certainly a retinal angioma. And so we did have to talk with Sylvia about that. And then we did tell her, but as far as tumors go, this one's easy peasy. A little laser surgery, bam, it's gone. You know, my husband's been through it. It's, it really, it's like, yes, okay, technically it is kind of a big deal. But for a child who's gone through like really major, <laughs> major life threatening surgeries, um, Having your eyes lasered, easy peasy, no big deal. Well, today, my husband took them. Originally, I was going to take them. We went back and forth. But in the end, my husband took the day off from work and he said, I'll take them. So, <laughs> so I really appreciated that because I have been up super late and I've been fighting a migraine all week. Um, and he did let me know that it is not a tumor. Instead, the doctor described it. She, the doctor actually said that my daughter is subtly weird. <laughs> so I just love that because now I can totally use that. Well, you know, Sylvia, you are officially subtly weird. Um, but she has a subtly weird vascular arrangement near her optic nerve essentially. <laughs> Which, yes, normally, even as I just say that, that sounds like a retinal angioma. But in this case, it isn't. For whatever reason, her right eye is just kind of subtly weird. So there you go. But he was, the doctor, my husband said, was really impressed that they did catch that over here because it is a very subtle finding. Um, so, you know, kudos to the university over here where they are just optometry. They are not ophthalmology. So kudos to them for finding that. That's pretty awesome. 
Uh, but fortunately, the expert says it is not a tumor, even though even the description, when, like I said, when I described it to you, it kind of sounds like a tumor, but it's not. So that's fantastic. Fantastic! So I'm sure my daughter is very relieved, very happy, and I am so relieved and so happy. <laughs> so yay! More good news. Oh, we had a huge scare in the fall. I thought for sure daughter number three had adrenal tumors and that testing came back negative. So right now, you know, knock on wood, but right now we're actually doing really, really well. And I hope it continues. I hope it, I mean, realistically, I know that it won't, but it can continue for as, as long as, as the universe allows. And I will be very happy, <laughs> very, very happy. <laughs> oh, all right. So I did finish my second color. Guys, this painting is confetti central. Oh my word. Now, when I purchased it, I did not know that it was going to be this confetti heavy. But look, look at this square. Look at this. Can you see this? Are you able to see this? And this is like the solid color portion, solid color portion of the canvas. And oh my word, it is... This is going to take me a long, a long time to get done. A long time. I love it. I mean, I really love it. And I'm excited about some of the changes I've done. So what I've done up here is there's one color, 820, that I have in a um, AB Glow Drill from DP with Sparklers. And so what I did last night when I laid that color... I Every tenth drill or approximately, because sometimes I would forget to count. Sometimes I didn't count correctly, but approximately every 10th drill that I put down, I used one of the AB Glow sparklers. Um, not sparklers, AB Glow drills and put that down instead. And I think I'm going to like that effect a lot, actually. Just really adds to it. And then technically, theoretically, that's supposed to glow in the dark too. So I'm kind of excited about that. But anyway, this painting is going to take me a very long time. Fortunately, February, I will have a break from it because I got other stuff that I'm doing in February. And I will talk about that a little bit later on, too. Um, so February, by the time we get there, I will need a break. Like, I already know I will need a break by February. Um, this is going to take me a while. This is definitely going to take me a while. But I am super excited about it. Like, truly really excited about it but it's gonna be a long long haul for me all right guys I really think that about sums up everything going on with me right now please do not forget a number of things first drill pens what is your favorite drill pen what company do you recommend who do you recommend for a slightly shorter pen lightweight let me know um please please let me know also I heard another youtuber <laughs> used this phrase and I loved it I'm trying to remember who it was it was a guy it may have been one of my son's youtubers um please don't forget to do all those youtube -y things <laughs> youtube -y things I love it if I happen to remember who that was I will let you know who I heard say that I thought it was really funny and cute and probably you know maybe a lot of people say it but anyway those youtube -y things include liking this video subscribing to my channel, leaving a comment, and of course you may share any content that you find amusing, helpful, interesting, etc. All right guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Please practice kindness. You never know what someone is going through. You don't know what their week has been like, so just be kind. And I hope that you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you again real soon.